I was a little kid, my dad used to tell me about CERN and the Particle Accelerator. A small city in Switzerland in Central Europe that would be home to the biggest physics experiment in the world. I remember one sentence very clearly. You know kid, when the scientists there make a mistake, they can accidentally create a black hole and destroy the entire world. I remember this so clearly because I was super scared. Now at the age of 25, I know that that's not what they are actually doing at CERN. Besides that, when I arrived in CERN earlier this year and put my foot on the ground for the first time, I still felt a little weird thinking about the immense energy that was accelerating protons possibly right beneath my feet. But that's not what this video is about. I can assure you that I'm not aware of any team of scientists who genuinely try to create a black hole on Earth. MIT is working on a star, but not on a black hole. But there is actually a black hole in close proximity to Earth. It is called Sagittarius A star and is only roughly 25,000 light years away. Okay, that might not be close, but it, in the scope of the universe, is like neighbors. The discovery of Sagittarius A star was recently rewarded with a Nobel Prize in physics. In the last video, I already talked about Roger Penrose, who holds half the prize. The other half went to Andrea Guess and Reinhard Genzel. Whereas Penrose received the prize for his theoretical prediction of a black hole as part of general relativity, Guess and Genzel received the prize for the discovery of Sagittarius A star. But what is a black hole anyway? What does it look like and how does it work? This right here is a black hole, or rather a CG render of one. In fact, we only have ever seen one single image of a black hole. When the telescope looks into the surrounding universe, they don't give us JPEGs or pinks, but numbers. It's then up to the scientists and CG artists to translate these numbers into images. Like this one right here. It isn't by any means physically accurate, but it gives us a good idea of how it might look like. In fact, we will actually never be able to really see a black hole. I mean, after all, it is black, or rather dark. When scientists first began thinking about these massive objects, they referred to them as dark stars. Why? Because black holes are supermassive stars that collapse after they, ru after they run out of nuclear fuel to fuse. After the collapse, a dark star does not allow any light to escape the event horizon, the point of no return. Why is that? Because once you cross the event horizon, space and time flip. Space becomes time and time becomes space. And we all know that it is physically impossible to go quote unquote back in time. It is the second law of thermodynamics. So going deeper into the black hole is equivalent to going forward in time. Yeah, I know, pretty weird. And the truth is we don't actually know what exactly is going on inside a black hole. In 1967, American physicist John Wheeler came up with the name black hole. Roger Penrose and Stephen Hawking proved that black holes can exist in the 1970s and after Einstein, Albert Einstein and many other scientists thought about the concept. In, in 2017, a team of astrophysicists measured the first ever black hole, Messier 87 star, named Powehi, Hawaiian for the generative darkness of creation, as the telescope, the James Clerk Maxwell telescope, used to measure it is based in Hawaii. So what is so special about these supermassive black holes? I mean, they definitely look cool, right? The last time I already talked about the heat death of the universe. If you're not familiar with it, you should check out the video before. But in essence, it predicts the freezing of the universe where all that remains are supermassive black holes and that they eventually go off with a pop. And that sounds kind of scary, if you ask me. But how could that be? What happens to all those other stars and planets? Well, odds are that they will eventually end up being eaten by a black hole. You see, black holes do not only consume massive particles like protons and neutrons, but also photons, it has light. And when they do that, they naturally expand in size. So what about Sagittarius A star? Will we end up in it at some point? Right now, in this exact moment, it's very likely that Sagittarius A star is feeding on a star that wasn't lucky enough to escape its gravitational gradient. But for a black hole to consume anything, it needs to collide with it. A black hole doesn't go hunting or for some stars or something. 
it just sits there like a sneaky predator and waits for its next victim. But at the distance of our solar system, but at the distance our solar system has to see a star, the probability of us interacting with it is almost zero. In about 4 billion years, our galaxy, the Milky Way, will collide with Andromeda and create a gigantuan mass. Stars will swivel around and planets will either burn up in the stars they collide with or and up in either Sagittarius A star or Andromeda's black hole. In this Milkdromeda blend, which would be an amazing new Starbucks thing by the way, all things can happen. It is a three-body problem on steroids. And the collision of some stars might even form a new black hole. Gravitational distortion might pull us apart or we will survive until our sun in 5.4 billion years will enter the helium burning air process. It will become a red giant and our sky will literally look like hell. Until Earth starts to burn and possibly even be consumed by our sun. And no, our sun will not go supernova. Oh, and forgot to mention that in about 1.1 billion years, our sun will already be 10% brighter and evaporate all oceans on Earth, so that might be a problem, I guess. Anyway, here comes the cool part. We all consist out of molecules that itself consists out of atoms. Most of them of oxygen, carbon, hydrogen, and nitrogen. Atoms are more alike than you might think. The sun can easily form any sort of atom out of hydrogen. In fact, in the beginning of the universe, there were only hydrogen and helium and a teeny tiny bit of lithium. So when you die, either as a human being, while Earth is still around, or you are consumed by sun as an android symbiote, your atoms will most likely end up being fused into some other atoms and might even compose a new human or you become part of the sun. And if we continue this deep link through space-time, our atoms will eventually either dissipate into photons or end up in a black hole, one way or the other. So good news. Well, at least if you always wanted to check out a black hole as Matthew McConaughey does in Interstellar. Because, I'm sorry to disappoint you, there's no way you can just easily float into a black hole like he does. That's not how physics works. That's just not how physics works. But again, it looks cool. If you want to read more about this topic and work your way through some papers, articles and other videos, I will leave, with, I will leave you with a collection of links that you can find in the description. And as always, you can find some extra cool stuff like this black hole render I made for this episode to use as your wallpaper, for example, on Patreon. You can start supporting this channel from $1 a month. It will be much appreciated and allow me to spend more time making these videos.